terminate the mandate! My name's Maureen Block. I'm on the board of Children's Health Defense California Chapter, which has started about a year and a half ago. Um, when Children's Health Defense, which is led by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., they decided they would start state chapters to reach out and do more grassroots um, state by state initiatives. And luckily we were started because then COVID began to happen and we were no longer just fighting for children's health at the level of um, other medical mandates and other medical issues and constitutional issues, but we are now facing this new vaccination, this new gene therapy vaccination, which was now being mandated to children, firefighters, federal workers, private companies. You can't go in and out of places with masks. So we are, we are um, very much law-based, and we end up um, taking big pharmaceutical companies and chemical companies to court to fight them on the science when they're lying to us about what they do and the effects they have on our children and our health. And now we have the COVID vaccine, which we were very much reading the studies as they were coming out and finding where they were not being truthful to us. So uh, we've been fighting this at courts, we've been activating um, volunteers, we've been talking to legislatures, we're helping families, we're helping kids who have actually been injured by the COVID vaccine. Um, we have a few um, plaintiffs now who cannot walk, some parents who have lost their children. And so if it's not completely safe and effective, then there has to be an option. There has to be an option to say, my body, my choice. And we fight for that. We fight for parents to be in control of their children, of their children's health. So far, at this juncture in California, it's not a very friendly situation because you have to remember judges are political animals. They get elected too, and they get their pockets lined. So if, it hasn't been that easy, but we're beginning to see with the massive amount of cases being filed across the country that we are making leeway now because as people are waking up to the fraud, to the lack of science, they are start, the judges will start to move with the, with the tide of the public opinion.
anybody here should take if they care about themselves, their health, and their families. And now, worst of all, they have mandated these shots onto children as young as five years old. Are you going to protect another's right to own their body? 
Yes. Are you going to protect their privacy? Yeah. Are you going to protect their very right to be human? To stay connected to divine design, to the creator? Right now, I, actually, I will say we were arrested in 2019. We were arrested in 2020 as the face of the COVID resistance before back in May of 2020. And I want to tell you, I consider that a badge of honor. And if we're still standing here, then you can be too. And I want to recognize every person that has stood outside their comfort zone in any way and has faced a teacher, an employer, a person at a store that vilified you, that harassed you, that has told you you're unclean, that you couldn't be there anymore, that they were going to discriminate against. Your efforts matter. Every stand that you took, you are doing it not only for yourself, or for your children, but for every other person. And I want to raise this up. Every veteran and every human that has stood through all of time to protect the future generations and a soul's right to be free. God did not create us to be slaves. We are made to be free. Governor, June of 2022. And when we made that decision a year ago, the first thing we did was not work on the website. We started to create a beautiful blueprint for California. A blueprint that you can hold my feet to the fire over my term. This blueprint for California is called a contract with California, and it's gorgeous. It is all based upon the seventh generation principle. Every decision you make today should serve seven generations from now. Yes. Now just imagine for one moment, one moment imagine if our leaders were making decisions through that lens. Imagine the world we would be living in. So we created this be beautiful blueprint for California. But also, I realized at that time that if I were to run, and represent the people, and I mean really represent the people, I could not represent a party. So I'm not a Democrat. I'm not running as a Republican. I'm running as a Californian. Okay. So real quickly, just to let you know, we're going to represent you, and we're going to do great things. And this contract with Californians, you know what you're going to be voting for when you vote for me? You're going to vote for the soil. You're going to vote for the legacy farms. You're going to vote for the water, the air. You're going to ask them to vote for bodily autonomy. You're going to vote for common sense education. And you're going to vote for the children and their, their children and their children. I look forward to serving all of you. My name is Renette Senem, and it's an honor. Thank you so much. But you see, when men and women gather in the streets, when children gather, when mothers gather, when the factory workers gather, when the students gather, then there is very little a dictator can do because liberty has been written on their hearts, liberty has been written on their minds, liberty has been written on their souls, just like it has on yours. Yeah. My friend, tyranny has never been the problem. Blind sheep who blindly obey the tyrants have always been the problem. So we cannot give up. We will not give in. We will not stand down. We will win if we don't give up. So will you give up? No. I can't hear you. Will you give up? No. I can't hear you. Will you give up? No. Now let's take back our nation. I haven't seen this many white people since college. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. I am an independent organization within the BLM movement. Right? But make no mistake about it. I represent that BLM shit to my core. I represent BLM to my core. I stand here for the millions of black voices that have been silenced by the government. The millions of black people who do not believe in these vaccines. A lot of people would say, 
cry. Because they experimented on us in slavery. Yeah. The government experimented on us up until 1981. That's right. The government continues to trample on our rights. So I am here in the name of freedom. How does it feel to have the government tell you where you can go? No. What you can do? To be threatened by the with the police if you're somewhere where you're not supposed to be. Now you know a little bit what it feels like to be fucking black. Right? Right? The problem is, with this society we live in, we are a bunch of selfish motherfuckers. And we don't care about the problem until it hits us. How does it feel for the mainstream media to call you crazy? Huh? How does it feel for people to not understand what you're complaining about? the next time you hear Black Lives Matter. Right. Think about that shit the next time you hear people tell you your pain isn't real. Yeah. I'm not here for unity. I'm here for effectiveness. I've seen enough fake unity with the Democratic Party. Yeah. Two differences between the two parties. The problem is they keep us divided. Yep. Republicans say they're anti-abortion. But now they call for bodily autonomy when it's time to, uh, to get a vaccine. Democrats say they're pro-choice. But you have no choice in the vaccine. Nah. Nah. I'm going to call it like I see it. Whether they like me or not. I'm a by any means necessary type of fighter. I am a liberty or death type of guy. So I'm here to say F these mandates. <laughs> to say I'm not having it. You're not going to tell me what to put in my body. I'll tell you the truth. All I want is a choice. Right? Go show me at the Barclays Center for Kyrie Irving. Yes, sir. I mean what I preach. You call me, I'm coming with the thunder. So next time I'm out in these streets fighting for my rights, you drop your politics and come and fight with me. Medical 
freedom. There have been a huge disconnect with informed consent to the Latino communities. So we have been providing that information. And boy, they're starting to wake up. Our people have been indoctrinated for years because this has been happening for decades. This did not happen just today. What we're living today has been in the wraps for decades. And we have been asleep. And it's our job to get out in our communities to wake the people up. And it starts in your own home. We're about to have a huge dinner with our families. It's about time we have that discussion and we let them know how we feel about our bodies being mutilated by pharmaceutical companies who are making a profit of our illnesses. This fight was a mother's fight. A lot of us here were mothers fighting in Sacramento. And we implore to many of you what they were doing to our children. My daughter has been segregated from going to public school. So now they have come to you and they're trying to segregate you from your jobs, from your daily living, from your daily shopping. So it's time. This is the time that you rise up. together, men, women, black, white, Hispanic, gay, straight across the world. Children are waiting for you to stand up. They are being raped as we speak. They need us to stand up. Freedom means something. We chant it little bit by little bit. On the count of three, freedom. One, two, three. Freedom. One, two, three. Freedom. One, two, Please welcome our Native American brothers and sisters. We come a long ways to speak and to pray with you and to tell you what you're doing here is a good thing. The government shouldn't control everything. It's wrong. My people know it from the day they're born to today. So all of you here today, for us, it's a lifelong battle. For you here, understand where it's coming from. I'm happy to see all of you come, no matter where you come from, and how you're going to defy the government in your way. But I also ask that we do it peacefully, where there's no buddy gets hurt. Because there's a lot of that going around in the last two years. There's a lot of things that's been going on. We have to put that aside, one common goal. The people own this land, so remember that. You are a part of what they call Turtle Island, that's America. America's a melting pot of all different people. No matter how you say it, it's the truth of what it is. Every day we defy the government because they take from us all the time. And they don't give back. They make statements, they say a lot of things that shouldn't, shouldn't be said to our people. They promised us, we have the worst of, we're the poorest county in this country. Every day, my people die from many things. Diabetes, alcohol, suicide. So today, like you, we tell them. They can't tell us what to do. We already know what to do. They shouldn't be telling you what to do. It's your life. They say freedom, but are they really giving you freedom? Ask yourself that every single day. But. I want to thank you for allowing us to come a long way and to talk and to, it. It to come and appreciate you. Thank you. We're going to sing a song all together and then we're going to exit off. Thank you.